In this screencast, we are going to talk about shifting the demand curve. Um, you will know the determinants of demand. There's five of them. You'll understand the difference between a change in demand versus a change in quantity demanded. And then you'll also understand how a change in demand causes a change in quantity supplied. Demand determinants are things that shift the demand curve. Um, in the past, we've talked about a movement along the demand curve where we've talked about a change in quantity demanded. If you look here at this graph, we have our title, which is so important, our market for shoes. Because we've got our title, we only need to put a P for the price of shoes and a Q for the quantity of shoes on the horizontal and vertical axes. Um, you have this intersection here of supply and demand, and that's giving you your equilibrium price and quantity. So if it was a change in quantity demanded, that could be where the equilibrium price might drop, and then that hits over on the demand curve here, and you find an increase in the quantity demanded, this movement along the demand curve. However, when we talk about the demand determinants, these are things that are changing the actual demand curve. And it's either increasing it, which is a shift to the right, or it's decreasing it, which is a shift to the left. Um, there's something about the buyers. The, the composition of the buyers has changed. And there's five determinants of demand that cause this change in demand. And you need to know these five determinants and be able to recognize examples and apply it to it. So an easy way to help remember it is to remember hashtag IPEP. And we'll go through what each one of these mean. For the hashtag, that means number, for number of consumers. These are the number of buyers that are out there. Uh, this could be like perhaps maybe people have migrated over to the country, and so that's increased the number of consumers. It could also be about a seasonal or time that where the number of consumers has changed. Um, maybe it's cold and you, there's an increase in the demand for heaters. Well, that would be because the number of consumers during the winter are ones that would need that. I is for income, and there's two types of goods for that, normal and inferior goods, and we'll talk about that a little later. P is for price of related good, substitutes and complements. I think that this one is something that is uh, prevalent on the AP exam. E is for the expectations of future, be it the price or availability, meaning that the price of something has um, might go up in the future, and so it hasn't changed now, and so you might change your demand now because of what you expect to happen in the future. Uh, same thing with availability. If you think something's not going to be around now, well, maybe that will increase your demand currently. And T is for taste and preferences. Uh, taste and preferences, it's do you like it or don't you? Um, maybe a celebrity is endorsing a product. Or maybe uh, research shows that, some, that this product is all of a sudden something that is healthy or beneficial. So maybe uh, research shows that uh, wearing shoes instead of sandals is better for your feet. And so as a result, that would cause an increase in the demand curve for the market for shoes. And so you see that with that, you have a shift to the right of the curve. You label it, and notice here it's labeled D2. Um, you could do a D1. It doesn't matter. I just tend to do that myself. Um, but you just have to make sure your numbers, when you're labeling things on the axes, correspond to how you have labeled the uh, curves. And they have to go in... Um, in order number wise. Um, okay, and so with this new intersection that you see here with supply and demand, you will label that one and show the, the price change and the P2, and that's showing that the price has gone up. Um, in addition, you need to draw a line down to the horizontal axes and label that a Q2. And notice a few things. Labeling happens along the axes. You do not put it up at the intersection where the, um, where the supply and new demand curve are meeting. I have arrows that are representing everything. You need to have those on a graph. It, it gives the reader, um, as somebody who's grading it, the um, flow of how things are changing with regard to the curves, price, and quantity. Okay, so let's jump over here to income with normal versus inferior goods. 
when we talk about a normal good, most goods are normal goods. And when we're looking at this determinant of demand, what we're looking at here is the relationship between income and demand. For a normal good, there's a positive relationship. When income goes up, demand also goes up. Again, most goods are normal goods. However, when income goes down, for a normal good, demand goes down. Inferior goods have an inverse relationship between income and demand. If, an in, if income goes up, um, maybe you get a new job and you're earning more money. Well, maybe you go from eating um, ramen noodles, which are much cheaper, and you might switch over to eating like pasta or lasagna or other types of noodles that are a little more expensive. Um, the same could be true that maybe you lose your job. And, and if you lose your job, Maybe as your income goes down, the demand for something that might be more easily uh, filling, like rice or you know potatoes, things that are cheap, those the demand for those might go up as a way to um, compensate for the loss of income. So if it'll be pretty obvious on test questions, it should be pretty obvious on test questions as to whether we're dealing with an income good or inferior good or a normal good. And if it doesn't say anything um, or isn't so blatantly obvious, uh, then assume that it's a normal good. Something that gets asked a lot is about price of related goods, substitutes versus complements. So with substitutes, these are things, that obviously, that I can substitute one for the other. And again, when we talk about something that shifts the demand curve, the price hasn't changed of that good, but rather the price has changed for the substitute good. And so when we talk about something um, with regard to this graph, again, we could look at sandals versus shoes. If the price of sandals goes up, the law of demand tells us that the quantity demanded for sandals goes down. And so that is a movement along the sandals graph. However, the shoe price hasn't changed, but because they're substitutes, people will use buy you know, less of the sandals, but will increase their demand for the shoes. And so that is what we would represent over here on this graph. Complements. Complementary goods are goods that are used together. So in this case here, if there's an increase in peanut butter, what's the complementary good of peanut butter? How about some jelly? And so the law of demand tells us for peanut butter, if the price of peanut butter goes up, then the quantity demanded for peanut butter will go down. And if these are goods that are used together, then if I'm going to use less peanut butter, that means then that I have to demand, or I will demand, less jelly. So these are all different determinants. And again, find a way to be able to memorize these and to be able to apply these to examples and then make sure that you are labeling your graph correctly. Okay, the last thing here is talking about, we've talked about this determinant of demand and how that's going to shift it, but also look at what it does with the supply curve. The supply curve is not shifted. There isn't a change in the composition of producers. However, if I look at the um, equilibrium points here on the supply curve, I see that there's a movement along the supply curve. And so when there is an increase in demand, that causes an increase in the quantity supplied. The, the same is true if I were to see then a decrease in demand. If let's just say that the original demand curve is here and it's shifting to the left and going down, well, this decrease in demand is causing the quantity supplied to go from this amount to down here. And so a decrease in demand causes a decrease in quantity supplied. A lot of times students will recognize what's going on with demand, but they won't be thinking about the quantity supplied. So it's just a good thing to have in your pocket to be able to understand. The last thing to point out, when you're talking about an intersection of the two curves, it is about quantity. This isn't me talking about quantity demanded or quantity supplied. When you're creating a quantity based upon the intersection of two curves, I am saying an increase in demand causes 
an increase in the quantity, the equilibrium quantity.